Hi everyone, I'm so excited to come to you today from a Marsis Revolution in London. I've got an interview right now with Dr. Ashwin Ram, AI expert with Google Cloud. He brings Google AI to the world and works with leaders of top companies to understand how they can leverage AI. He's a leading researcher, a technologist, professor, and prior to being with Google, he, was, he led conversational AI with Amazon Alexa. So you're gonna really love this interview, so let's get into it. Ashwin, thank you so much for joining us today. I so appreciate your time, and I'm excited to talk with you about marketing and AI uh, here at Revolution. Likewise. All right, so one thing that I'm interested in is we at Amarsis talk a lot about hype-free, tangible AI, because there's so much hype around AI today, right? And I know that you've been in, in or around AI for more than 20 years, right? So I'm interested in your perspective in particular on AI. And if you had to sum it up in about a minute or so, what's your perspective on where we are today? So we've been working on AI for, you know, for half a century, and that's just modern AI, let alone the previous more philosophical approaches. And I think we're still working on the same problems. We're trying to understand how human thought works and how we can get computers to do similar things as they solve hard problems in the world with us. I think what's changed over the years are the techniques we use. We've become a lot more sophisticated in our understanding of intelligence and how we might deploy that in a way that can actually go to work for us in the real world. That's awesome. So I know that a lot of people that I speak to think that AI is something new, right? They think it's this new thing, it's this new um, ingredient in our technology. And I know that you, for one, know that that's not true. So what would you say to people who think that way, who think that AI is some new thing? So AI is new, and it's also not new. As I mentioned, uh, we've been working on these problems for a long time. It's funny, the problem I worked on for my PhD thesis, which is how we use language to communicate, is the same problem we're working on today. What is new, though, are the techniques we use and the approaches we use to AIs. Uh, we've, we've gone through, as I mentioned in my keynote earlier, gone through a series of phases in AI, starting from trying to capture human knowledge inside a machine to moving to learning and now deep learning, trying to model human, think, human brain and human thought in the brain. Uh, and we are now realizing that we have to now bring some of the older knowledge-based approaches back in and start to blend them with modern approaches to make the next leap. So in a sense, it's, it's, it's both old and new at the same time. That's incredible. And, and so it is fascinating that what, what's old is new again. I mean, would you say it's like cyclical and it's, or it's just constantly going back to the foundation and, and looking at how to apply it something new? Yeah, I don't think of it as cyclical. It more, it's evolving mm. in a way that gives us sort of deeper understanding of the foundations, but also deeper understanding and ability to apply those foundations to real problems that you and I care about. Yeah, that's incredible. So I know there's, related to AI, there's a lot of conversations about ethics, right? So I know that you led conversational AI at Amazon Alexa, right? So how did you, and, and at other companies that you've been with, and maybe at Google, how have you found the balance between consumer experience and innovation and ethics? That's a great question. Uh, I don't think of it as a trade-off, but rather as a blending of those approaches. So in the work I've done, and uh, this is true of the companies I've been with as well, with Google, uh, at Amazon as well, uh, Xerox PARC, uh, in, even back to my professor days where I was a professor both of AI and of human-centered computing, the approach we've taken is human-centric. Let's start with the customer in mind, the user in mind, the consumer in mind and let's figure out what their problems are, what their needs are, where the friction is in their lives, and try to alleviate that. And when you work back from the end result you want to have into the techniques that can be used to accomplish those results, you end up in a place that is for the user and not in some ethical way against them. So that's, I think that's the way you balance it. Now, of course, uh, you do have to have a lot of, take a lot of care in creating the AI so you don't inadvertently produce malicious effects. Uh, and so at Google, for example, we have an AI Fairness Council and we have principles that guide the practitioners of AI to sort of doing the right thing for the user. Would you say it's no matter what, no matter how much technology is involved, whether you're talking B2B or B2C marketing, that it's always, there's two humans, right? There's always, it's always human to human, no matter what. And so there always has to be a human element, right? No matter what 
kind of technology you're using? Yeah, there's always a human element because at the end of the day, it's the human and the humans that we're serving. Mm -hmm. uh, there may or may not be a human on the other end. You might have a purely autonomous system, but that autonomous system has to interact with a human at some point. Mm -hmm. And so every system, I think, is a human machine system, and the AI has to be designed to serve that. I like that, a human machine system, I like that. So I know you just mentioned Google, uh, you transitioned relatively recently yeah. to Google, um, which is clearly one of, if not the most, perceived to be the, the most innovative company in the world, right? So many think, or might think that Google wins AI because of the amount of data that they have, right? But I'm interested in your point of view, um, is it the data or is it about the algorithms? If you had to, to choose one or, or speak about that, which one would you say is more valuable? I think the answer is yes, <laughs> it's both. Yeah. Uh, data is certainly important, right? Because you take these machines, they need to know stuff about the world and the way they learn that is through experiences and through data and through examples about the world around them. Much like you and I learn or our kids learn, right? They have experience in the world and the, that, those experiences give them the data on which to learn from. So data is important but you also need the right sets of algorithms to learn from. So there's a lot of work now in machine learning where you look at uh, machine learning as a, quote, big data problem. You take enough data in and you can train a system to do almost anything. Well, you and I can operate in new, in new environments, unexpected situations, deal with novel, expect, uh, uh, novel occurrences of things that we don't have a lot of experience with. We seem to function just fine. Those are small data problems. And so we have to have machines capable of handling those as well. And so at, uh, in, the, in sort of modern AI, there is a lot of big data involved, but there are also new algorithms for dealing with situations where you don't have a lot of data. At Google's AutoML system, for example, uses techniques for semi-supervised learning and transfer learning, where you can take knowledge and experiences from one area and transfer them to something new where you may not have a lot of data. So those algorithms are critical as well, along with, of course, the data that powers them. Absolutely. You can't have one without the other, right? What's an algorithm without data? Without data and, and what's data yeah. without something to do with it? Yes. Right? It's incredible. So any other thoughts that you want our audience to know about AI and, and its impact on, on marketers today? AI is having an a interesting impact on marketing, which is we are moving from a channel-first mindset in marketing mm -hmm. to a consumer-first mindset. As I talked about in, in my keynote, um, marketing used to be about one-to-many conversations, right? You take a bunch of messages and you find a way to broadcast them out to the audience. It, marketing is now shifting to being a one-to-one -one conversation. You want highly personalized, individual interactions with people when they want them, where they want them, and about what they want. And you, you need uh, AI to help make sense of this very complex world we live in and be able to interact with people where they are without being intrusive. I think that's the big win for marketing. Yeah, it's that, that age-old uh, question of how do you deliver the right content to the right people on the right channel at the right time right. in ways that will be relevant right. to Except them. Except I would change one word there, deliver. Sure. It's ah. not about me delivering you information. It's my, me engaging you in a highly personalized interaction around that information. Yeah. Right. So it's not a producer to consumer relationship. Mm -hmm. It's actually a partnership. So important. So important. So with that, I am interested in your thoughts on the future of marketing. Um, I'm sure that so much of what you do is future focused. So what's something that you see coming our way um, as marketers, whether it's something you're excited about or something that maybe you're concerned about? I, th I think it's this idea of a conversation, right? I think we've all been over the past 10 or 20 years getting tired of being barraged by, by spam and robocalls and this kind of scattershot approach to throw stuff out there and see what sticks. If marketing is now moving to a point where if I can get information I need, when I need it, that's actually helpful to me, not intrusive, it almost becomes my ally in tackling the real world around me as opposed to being something I have to keep away. Uh, that's, I think, an exciting thought for me as a user and a consumer. Marketing can actually help me get my work done. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something we talk about a lot at Marsis too, is that as a consumer, you want information and offers and content that's valuable. And as a marketer, I want to deliver that. Not deliver, I want to engage with you in that way, right? And so it's, it's bridging that gap and making it happen for both, both sides, that's right? right? That's right. So. And it's also equally important that marketing is also about filtering out the information I don't need to engage with that causes information overload. 
Right. Right. So if you can sort of tailor that experience for me and, and create this sort of rich, engaging, interesting experience as I go about my daily life, yeah. that's a win for both parties. Absolutely. Absolutely. So before we let you go, um, are you willing to do a little rapid fire with sure. us? Okay. Love so to. first question, if you had to summarize marketing in just one word today, what would it be? Consumer first. I like it. Well, you use a hyphenated word. I like it. Consumer first. Um, and if you, let's see, um, what is one thing that you want marketers to know, but you're pretty sure they don't? It's that AI is actually available to you and within your reach now. People think of AI as being this very complex black box thing that requires years of study in some esoteric subject to master as you get PhDs, et cetera. It isn't. The AI building blocks are there. And for example, some of the work I talked about in my keynote, they're there for people to use, people who don't necessarily understand the, the technology, but are ready to use it. So I think marketers often don't realize how accessible AI has become to, to them. Definitely, definitely. And what's some content that you've consumed recently, or maybe you're consuming now a book or a podcast or something that you've consumed that you would recommend for our audience? Okay, so I'm going to show my nerdy, nerdiness here, but <laughs> I, love, like I love the blogs that companies put out who are doing the work. Uh, so if you look at the Google AI blog and the other leading companies in the space are putting out blogs as well, I read all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the blogs are a nice sort of short digestible summary of recent advances in AI, but also what people are doing with the AI and how it works in a way that it doesn't necessarily require a lot of technical expertise to understand. It helps you understand sort of the impact of AI and how it's connecting. And then there are always links there to go and deep dive further if you want. Uh, in terms of more of the, uh, there's uh, public media, there are good aggregators now of information that are, that are relevant. Uh, of course, there are automatic, automatic ag aggregators like Google News and so forth, mm -hmm. uh, but there's some good, uh, I think, editorial aggregators as well. Uh, I like VentureBeat uh, yeah. in, here in London. I like Cognition X. Mm -hmm. They do a good job of, sort of putting together uh, the snippets that I find interesting. That's great. Fantastic. So before we let you go, where can our audience find more information about you and some of the work that you're doing? Um, I guess the best way to find me is on LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, my handle is Ashwin Ram, my word, my name, on both LinkedIn and Twitter. Sounds great. Well, Ashwin, thank you so much for being with us today here at Revolution. I just appreciate your time. It's been a pleasure, Lindsay. Thank you for thank having you. me.